Okay, right. So in you know, today's class, the next half of the gravitation chapter we are going to study, that is what uh, thrust and pressure. So as we all know that uh, till last class, we discussed what is uh, gravitational force and what is universal law of gravitation, how to calculate mass and how to calculate weight and all. And we have been made a formula relation between mass and weight. That is what weight is equals to. What is the relation, guys? Weight is equals to mass into Yes, please. Mass into acceleration due to gravity. Okay. So mainly we will consider the two celestial objects if you have taken basically. One is Earth and another one is Moon. So entire class 9th will discuss about the weight on Earth and as well as weight on Moon. So there is a relation we will study. So gravity of Earth is equals to 6 times of gravity of Moon. As well as we have studied gravity of moon is 1 by 6 times of gravity of everyone. Gravity of earth. Same way as the gravity is 6 times of gravity of moon. Then weight on earth is also 6 times of weight on moon. Or weight on moon is equals to 1 by 6 times of weight on earth. So this is the most important relation which you have to remember regarding weight and as well as acceleration due to gravity of earth and moon. So they, they can ask anything in the exam. So you have to do it. So now how to find the relations between this? That's what some, sometime I'll, I'll teach and I'll, I'll finish it. So if you all notice so, it, weight on earth is equals to what we can say mass into G which is equals to mass. That is what? M into G means what? Capital G into mass of earth divided by radius of earth whole square. Am I right, Mari? Clear everybody? Please respond. Same way, weight on moon is equals to, weight on moon is equals to mass into gravity of moon, which is equals to, what will happen, guys? Mass into gra G into mass on moon Sorry, mass of moon divided by radius of moon whole square. Am I right, guys? Please speak loudly. Everybody? All of you? Yes, please. Understand, Amma? Now, so let me divide whatever you want. Weight on earth divided by weight on moon. If I do the division, I will get it. Small m into capital G into capital M E. Mass of earth divided by radius of earth whole square divided by m into capital G into mass of earth divided by radius of moon whole square. So now I will get cancel. Small m, small m get cancelled. Small g, small g will get cancelled. So what is remaining? Can you tell me? m mass of earth divided by radius of earth whole square. This one will come reverse. What is that? Radius of moon square divided by mass of moon. Will you all agree with me? Everybody? If you are all yes, safe, okay, I will proceed. So till here any doubt you can ask me. Do it now, everybody. Now I will say you two statements. So from that you all can experience it. How it will be fine one by six. Let us discuss. You can solve in two ways. You can solve any way. Nothing wrong in that. That is. So this is to find how it is known as one by six times. Yes, as one by six mark. That's all it is. Nothing else is there. Clear? Huh? So it is there in your uh, it's, uh, your book also. Uh, in your Eschan book also it is there. I will show you this everything. So you can open yes. in our book. If you open in our book, just you can see page number 105, you can notice it. But that is very, very toughest one. So calculating individually, substituting mass of earth, radius of earth and all. So there is a simplest way we can uh, basically solve. So that is what even uh, you can notice this one in our uh, Ishan book. So it is a very simplest uh, one. What does that mean? I will say you two statements, write the two statements and we can uh, finish it very easily. Okay. So let's start now, everybody. So till here, any doubt, anybody can ask me. Are you clear, guys? All of you understood? Ah? Yes, sir. Yes. So now I'm going to use the two statements here. The statement is radius of earth and mass of earth is how many times bigger than moon? That is approximately I'm making. Remember, mass of earth is 100 times of mass of moon. Approximately. What is that? Mass of earth is equals to approximately 100 times of mass of moon. Any problem for anybody? Are you clear, guys? Next. 
approximately radius of earth is approximately four times of radius of moon radius of earth is approximately four times of radius of what guys yes please moon radius of moon now so doubts are how did you taken it as 100 am ma'am sir that's what mari i'm saying if you calculate it you know mass of earth what is the mass of earth mari mass of earth what value you can see in our book and you can tell what is the mass of earth what is the mass of earth 6 9.8 9.8 what are you talking girl 5 into 5.98 into 10 power 24. That's what we can say. Page number 105. You all can see that. Page number 105, I'll show you. So, mass of earth and mass of moon they have given. Have you checked it? This tabular column, page table 9.1. All of you verified. So, mass of earth and mass of moon they have given. So, mass of earth is basically we'll consider 6 into 10 power 24. Mass of moon is 7.4 into 10 power 22 so if you consider this masses basically power you have to see this value not so basically if you calculate mass of no, earth, that is radius sir mari this is radius mari this is mass mari what mari hmm? is it visible my screen is visible or not visible huh? yes. ah. this is mass ra kg Purima. this is radius so, mass of earth is, if you notice these values, it is approximately, that's why I'm using this symbol, approximately 100 times of moon. Means, mass of, if you want to get a one earth, how many moons we have to keep inside? How many moons we can keep? Everybody? Approximately how many moons, guys? 100 moons we can put it. That will give you the equals to the mass of earth. Same way, how many radius? 100 like 4 radius mass radius of earth is approximately 4 times of radius of moon means 4 moons is been kept together that is equals to the radius of earth Purima Elame understand everybody so that is what it is so by using the two statements I can simply solve it otherwise value substituting you can solve nothing wrong but by taking that assumptions I can easily we can finish it so that's all it is now. So I will replace mass of earth with 100 times of more, mass of moon. Radius of earth is 4 times of radius of moon. That's all. Replace it and tell me everybody what will happen. In place of mass of earth, what I can write? Everybody. 100 times of mass of moon. Can I write it or not? Everyone, please respond. Into radius of moon whole square divided by next one. Radius of earth means what is that? 4 times of radius of moon whole square into mass of moon. Now you all can observe. It's very simple actually. So now this is what? Mass of weight on earth. Weight on earth divided by weight on moon. Okay, wow. Now you can see mass of earth and mass of earth will get cancelled. What is remaining? 100 into radius of moon whole square divided by this 4 square. 4 square means how much guys? 4 square means how much ra? 16. 16. 16. 16 radius of moon whole square. So again, what will cancel? Agalia? Radius of moon, radius of moon get cancelled. So what is remaining? Weight on earth divided by weight on moon is equals to 100 divided by 16. Can you tell me what table I can simplify it? Anybody? Yes, please. Aditariyada. Aditariyada means what again? Yes. Yeah, approximately we can make four times a day. Four times a approximately say, so long, ra. 16, 5, sa, how much? 16, 6, sa, how much? Ra? You can do with the two table also if you are like that much legends. Means. Okay. So if you have that much difficulty, let us go with the 2, 8, sa, 2, 50. Sa. Next one, 2, 4, sa, 2, 25. Sa. So 25 by 4. 25 by 4, any other possibilities is there? Anybody? 6.25. Yeah. So that is what. So approximately you will get it. Understanding? 1 by 6. Uh, sorry. 6 times it will come. So 6 times of. 6 times it will come. Or we can say 6 by 1. So weight of earth divided by weight of moon is equals to 6 by 1. So I will take weight on earth is equals to 6 times of weight on moon. That is the answer. Purima. 
If you take reverse, you will get it lesser. Weight on moon divided by weight on earth. If you solve it, you will get approximately 1 by 6. So, means weight on moon is equals to what? 1 by 6 times of weight on earth. That's all. So, that is how you have to solve the relation. Are you clear, everybody? All of you understand, Ma? Okay, Mari? Okay. Yes, sir. So, please make it anything doubt you can ask me. Okay, everyone. So, just by taking two assumptions, mass of Earth is equals to 100, 100 times of mass of moon, radius of Earth is equals to 4 times of radius of moon. So, if not, sir, I want to solve it by values. You can substitute it. Mass of moon you can substitute. Mass of Earth you can substitute. Radius of Earth you can substitute. If you are keep on solving, at last, again, you will get the same answer. You can notice it. So, they are, they are substituting, they are taking reverse. Your choice it is. What we have solved, everybody? We have solved weight on earth divided by weight on moon. But now they are solving here, weight on moon divided by weight of earth. So, substitute the values. So, small g, small g cancel, capital G, capital G cancel. Only have taken, you can see here, they have taken weight on moon. Weight on, uh, that is what, mass of moon into small m. Small m will get cancel divided by radius of moon square. Then same way for earth also you calculate. This is for moon will come. This is for earth will come. If you divide them, you will get approximately 0 0.165, which is equals to 1 by 6. Do you understand, Mari? But this is the hardest part. Going with the calculations, it will take more and more time. If you are interested, you can solve. Nothing is there, like we can say. But if you assume, assume that mass of the moon is, sorry, mass of the earth is, 100 times approximately equals to mass of the moon. Radius of the earth is approximately 4 times of radius of moon. Without any calculations, this all, you can directly will get approximately 1 by 6 times. That's all it is. But keep it in mind, the ratio if you are taking, here they are taking weight on moon divided by weight on earth. So that you will get ratio 1 by 6. If I choose weight on earth divided by weight on moon, I will get what guys? Everybody. What I will get, please respond. 6 by 1 will come. Okay. So that is what you have to remember. Because what is the relation? Weight on earth is equals to 6 times of weight on moon. Or weight on moon is equals to 1 by 6 times of weight on earth. This is what I want to teach you. So most important one. So kindly focus it. Anything doubt, you can ask me. Please uh, do it. Any doubt, guys? Understand, Ara? All of you? Alfin? Agalya? Kavya? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, please make yes, it. Sir. So, it's a very simplest one. So, this is the relation. How weight on earth and weight on moon? Uh, definitely, they will ask you always these two things only in any exam. So, most probably, as it is, uh, earth is like uh, we can say it's uh, you can take uh, moon is the natural satellite for the earth. So basically most probably will compare only moon and earth. 95% cases. So any other cases they will ask you how to calculate it. You can find any relations. Okay. So that's what it is. For example, you can see things smart. If they will ask you, we all know what is the gravity of sun? Anybody can tell? What is the gravity of sun? Sun. We have got the value. You all can remember. <laughs> tell me. Approximately how much I got? Gravity of sun. Yes, please. Check your notebooks and tell. I have given you the tabular column also. Gravity of sun, how much got, guys? Yes, please. Around 273. Am I right? Yes, please. Meter per second square. Gravity of earth is how much? Approximately, you can take 10. So then, if you want to find the ratios, gravity of sun is equals to approximately how many times? How many times bigger than gravity of earth? You want to get 273 into 10. How many times you have to multiply? Everybody? To get the gravity of sun. Adi Thiriyara. Adi Thiriyara. 27 times. 27 times approximately how to divide. That's what. So 27 times of gravity of earth. That is relation. Our gravity of earth is approximately how many times? 
ट्वेंटी वन बै ट्वेंटी सेवन टाइम ग्राविटी आफ सन पुरीमा लाइक दट इफ यू नो द ग्राविटी यू कैन फैंड एनीथिंग अंड वेट आलो सेम वेट आन सन इज इक्वल टू अप्रॉक्सीमेटली हाउ मेनी टाइम मोर दैन दट एवरी बाडी ट्वेंटी सेवन टाइम मोर दैन वेट आन अर्थ पुरीमा then weight on earth is equals to 1 by 27 times of weight on sun so every relation is same if you find if you know the gravities always the relations are very similar things understand arasani hasani mr lingesh laksha that is what it is any planets you can take i have given you the tabular column so any planet you can take in the similar way and you can calculate it any doubt anybody can ask me mr sanjay clear ah mari doubt Oh, sir. So they can ask in anything, but your level, ninth class level, they will ask you only moon and earth. So you can do it. So this is all about the mass and weight concept. Based upon this, definitely there will be a numericals every exam. Whatever the exam, we will be having the numericals. Now we are going to start the next concept. That is what the most important concept. That is only called as thrust and pressure. so what do you mean by this thrust and pressure basically eighth class you will you might be studied force and pressure do you remember everybody you might be studied the force and pressure everybody yes sir so that force and pressure only we used to call it as here thrust and pressure okay so exactly like force and pressure force is thrust is a kind of force that's all it is nothing else is there so let us discuss so under this under the foundation class it will be we used to call this entire thing we used to say hydrostatics hydrostatics because we are going to study properties of liquids and gases so that is why we are main concentration is liquids and gases only means the pressure exerted by liquids the force exerted by liquids or the force exerted by gases are the pressure exerted by gases extremely important concept for 11th physics second volume 2 it will get properties of matter you will study in the 11th class physics again so this is the basic thing you will study here so then it will be goes to extremely deeper in the class 11 so hydrostatics please write it so before beginning this chapter you all should remember whatever you studied about in 8th class atmospheric pressure do you remember atmospheric pressure everybody yes, yes mari and those who are my old students many of you are agalya mari sanjay you all people knows i used to taught you you might be remember that uh, liquid pressure law of liquid pressure called as pascal's law or else even your school also you might be studied so properties of liquid pressure properties of liquid pressure you might be studied when you are going deeper into the liquid pressure increases at a given depth pressure is distributed uniformly in all the direction this all the things you might be studied do you remember everybody are you trying to remember everyone so that is only we used to say law of liquid pressure of course again i'll teach you which we used to called as pascal's law so we are going to discuss that even eighth class i think i have taught already for them derivation also that's fine we again we'll study so the main thing we are going to discuss here what is the important of this chapter if you are completing this thrust and pressure remember about the solid pressure we will discuss only very few things after that the entire concept is running behind the fluids this fluids means what fluids means only example everybody liquids and gases are called gases. as fluids who can flow easily the substances which can flow easily is called as fluids so in this entire chapter hydrostatics i am neglecting the solids pressure pressure exerted by solids just i am talking about the hydrostatics we will understand how the pressure varies with the height of a fluid column that's what i said class 8 what you studied the similar thing how the pressure varies like suppose you are in a ocean i am i am swimming at this point and i swimming at this point i am swimming at this point how the pressure varies from one point to another point and what is the principle behind it what is the construction and working of atmospheric pressure device what is the device we used to say atmospheric pressure we used to measure with a, anybody 
atmospheric pressure is measured with a barometer. Adi teri adi. Liquid pressure is measured with a ninth eighth class. What you studied? Nothing studied, sir. Liquid pressure is measured with a what? Anybody? Manometer. Okay. So we will study the principal construction and working of this manometer and different barometers. Types of barometers which we will use to measure. Barometer is to measure what? Everybody. Atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure. The most important chapter concept in 11th class physics. Please remember part 2, volume 2 it will come. Next we will study as I said at a given depth for example in a 100 meter depth from the surface all the ninth class boys are swimming now. So everybody will experience the same pressure in every direction. That is the law we used to call it as at a given depth pressure is distributed uniformly in all the directions. That is what we used to call it as what law we used to say Pascal's law. Okay, we'll discuss that. And what is the applications of this Pascal's laws? Hydraulic press. You all know car washing and all. If you go, hydraulic press will be there. What is the importance of hydraulic press? Hydraulic brakes. That is all we'll discuss. And what is the most important thing is Archimedes principle. That is the main thing which you will carry from class 9th to class 11. That is what we used to call as this one Archimedes principle. Every boat, every streamline bodies in the water, waters, water transportation completely will be designed only based upon the Archimedes principle. And what is law of flotation? Archimedes principle, law of flotation and their real life applications. And we'll study the surface tension and viscosity also. So as I said last year, I told uh, my 8th class students like you people only. What is surface tension? I told you that I will float the needle on water. Am I right, everyone? But yes, uh, there is no time and uh, nobody bought the needle. But definitely coming offline classes, once I teach the surface tension, after that I will show you how the needle can float on the surface of water. None can make you to float, but I will make you to float because of the concept called as surface tension. Remember, surface tension is also one of the major chapter in class 11th physics. It's directly, 100% I'm sure till 11th class, nowhere you will use the word called as surface tension unless you are studying in ICSC. ICSC you will get it in class 8th itself. But CBSC only you will get in 11th class. So very, very important concept regarding uh, physics if you have taken hydrostatistics. This all the concepts what we are going to study in this is a basic fundamental one the most important one okay so that is why let us see in you know today's class we will finish what is there in our thrust and pressure and then hydrostatics introduction from introduction we will continue in the tomorrow's class so hydrostatics means we'll we'll speak about only what guys fluids it will speak about what everybody fluids what do you mean by fluids liquids and gases gases okay so now let us finish this Thrust concept, thrust and pressure, solid pressure, whatever we are going to study now, what pressure it is, everybody, it is all about solid pressure only, okay. So what do you mean by thrust? Let first understand what do you mean by force. Can you tell me what do you mean by force guys? Definition of force, anybody? A push or, yes please, push, push or pull, pull of an object. Yeah. Pull up an object, we used to call it as what? We used to say force. If I push the object or if I pull the object, which we used to call it as push. This is push and this is a pull, which we used to say force. Now, so you can notice it. If I am having, for example, there is a random body, all of you observe, it's a surface, two dimensional one. Now I can apply the force like this. 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 Any direction I can apply. So this is what we used to call it as force. If I am exerting the force, force can be applied on a body in any direction. That is what we used to call it as force. And force can cause us effects of forces. You might be studied in 8th class and 9th class also. Chapter number 2, force and loss of motion we studied. Totally how many effects we studied guys? Anybody remember? Five. Five effects we studied. 
So force can be applied in any direction. Now, this force can only be applied perpendicularly to the surface, normal to the surface. All of you hold your pen perpendicularly on your ground, on your bench. Everybody, perpendicularly means terima. Elame. What do you mean by perpendicular? Kavya, just put right. your pen needle. Right angle. Yeah, right angle on your surface. So any kind of surface, this is actually two-dimensional one. If I take a random body, if I apply the perpendicular force on a surface, perpendicularly or normal to the surface, normal to the surface or perpendicular to the surface, perpendicular, perpendicular to the surface, that force is to called as thrust. Please remember, capital T. Understanding? The perpendicular force which is exerting on the surface is only called as what? Everybody? Please respond. Thrust. Thrust. Purema, perpendicularly to the surface of the like any force which is exerting perpendicularly to the surface. So, suppose if you are walking on the sand, now you tell me, is it call it as a thrust or not? If you are walking on a sand, sand or a surface, is it walking, is it, that's one, everybody. Is it? Yes, sir. Because you are walking on the ground. If this is the ground, you are walking perpendicularly. So your, your force is exerting like this. This is the ground and your force is exerting. So that this is called as what? Thrust or not? All of you respond. That is what we used to call as yes. thrust. So any force, we apply a force perpendicularly to the surface of the surface. Then that is called as, what we used to call everybody? We used to call it as thrust. Or normal, normal to the surface, which we used to call it as thrust. Sir, why can't we exert then bottom, sir? That is different, guys. That we'll study again. If the perpendicular force exerting from bottom, basically it will be liquids will exert. Solid cannot be. So that is called as buoyant force, which we'll study in the later class. Okay. So this is what we used to call as thrust. Any problem for anybody? I hope you all understand. Thrust means Agalya. Yes. So now yes, sir. this thrust, let us write everybody. Definition you write. Thrust is defined as the force acting on a body, force acting on a body, force acting on a body, force acting on a body. Sangamitra, are you understanding Sangamitra? Force acting on a body, normal, normal also we can call it another word. What is another word of normal? Everybody. Perpendicular. Perpendicular to its surface. Perpendicular to its surface is called is called thrust. So, what is the unit of thrust? Anybody can tell. What is the SI unit of thrust? What is the, what you are expecting? It is a force. So, what is the SI unit of thrust? Everybody, same mm -hmm. Newton only. Understanding, Amma? So, force and thrust both are same Newton. And what is the CJS unit? Same. It is what dyne. So, yes. one Newton is equals to. 10 power 5 dines. So please note it. Everybody. Clear understanding? All of you? Now, this thrust is also we can express in gravitational unit. Please note, this is the most important for you. That is what we used to call it as kilogram weight. Because we all know that force is equals to weight. Am I right? Understand? Uh? Please. Sir, then we keep it as uh, yes. kg meter per second square, sir. No, 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 no. Kilogram weight, I said. Not kilogram. Understanding? So, as I said, what is the unit of forces? Anybody can tell? What is the unit of forces? Newtons and kgf. Am I taught you or not? Kilogram force. Everybody? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes? That's what it yes. is. Force is equals to weight. That is only we can say. So, this is called as gravitational unit. Please note it. This is the SI unit of thrust. Gravitational unit Thrust, write it, everybody. Thrust is also expressed in, these all are very fundamentals, please note it. Thrust is also expressed in, in gravitational unit. Gravitational unit. Units. Gravitational units called 
kg remember kg side by side you have to write and small wt subscript you have to write it call it as kilogram weight what is to call everyone kilogram weight or we can say kgf kgf what do you mean by kgf kilogram folks okay everyone both are same remember that kg kilogram weight or kilogram force both are same 1 kg kilogram weight is equals to please note it 9.8 newtons or we can say 1 kg f is equals to also 9.8 newtons please note it relation the most important relation anywhere anybody having ask me that okay wa? same way cgs unit is another gravitation is gf gf means what anybody can tell gram force or we can say gram weight g gwt which is equals to 980 dynes very very important relations extremely important for your uh, general knowledge and general awareness skills and all. soon you will experience the importance of this all the things in your daily life okay so i am assuring you that you can experience it also the day will come you can see that so I hope you all are working. Everybody understand, Amma? All of you? Yes. Yes? Everybody? Yes, sir. Note it. Very, very important. Physics means conversions. Physics means units. Physics means nature. Everything you need to study. Please learn. Everything is always important. If you are showing the interest, physics always makes you comfortable. Otherwise, it's very, very torture for us. I'm saying you. If you are coming higher classes, physics become a burden for us. That's all I'm saying. So this is what about the thrust. Any problem, anybody, you can ask me. Next. Thrust, we are going to study. Indirectly, I'm saying you solid pressure. I'm, I'm saying you heading call it as a pressure. Whenever I say pressure, automatically we are studying what? It's about solid pressure. If it is a liquid pressure, 100% I will use a word called it as a what? Liquid. If it is a gaseous pressure, definitely I will use a word called as gaseous pressure. Or I will use a word called as fluid pressure. But pressure, solid pressure, it is not necessary to use a word called as solid. But if I am saying a pressure, means it is actually a what? Everybody? Actually what it is? Please respond. It is a solid pressure only. Okay. Wow. Pressure. What is pressure? Mr. Mukesh, are you writing? So make it everyone. Pressure means force exerted. Force exerting. Force exerting per unit area. Unit area is only called a pressure. Force exerting per unit area. But here we are not supposed to use a force. What is the word we have to use it? Because we studied not force. We studied what? Thrust. Do you understand everyone? All of you? That's one, Ra. Yes? So force or thrust. Whatever it is. Both are same. Force or thrust exerting. Exerting for unit area is called, is called pressure. So write it. The force or thrust exerted per unit area, exerting or exerted per unit area is called pressure. So pressure P is equals to, pressure P is equals to thrust by area. So what is the symbol for thrust? Do you, are you thinking T? What is the symbol for thrust? Anybody? Thrust symbol. Anyone? Thrust is a what, guys? Thrust is a force only. Am I right or wrong? Yes, sir. Yes, that's what. Thrust or force, both are same. But we are choosing a particular word for the thrust. What is the meaning of thrust? If the force exerting only perpendicularly to the surface or only normal to the surface, then that force only we used to consider as a what? Everybody? We used to call it as a thrust. That's all. Nothing else is there. Understanding? So, meeting is going to end. Join back and we'll continue from here. Any doubt, anybody can ask me. Arasni, understand Arasni? Abrami? Yeah, please. 
Mr. Gopal, this much late joining, carelessness, very, very bad, Gopal, this is. That's why your life is not changing, Gopal. Extremely bad. I'm saying you correct. There is no 